What you've done, you let it escape. No, I didn't. It was you that opened the cage. Go on, Leah. Get the rabbit back. All right. Leah, Leah! Come back inside this minute! Leah! Come back in at once! on me. Please, give me a drop of your water. I'm dying of thirst.
Please let us in. We've been on the road since this morning. Go away. <laughs> if you have no money, you can't come in tonight. Out of the way. Out of the way now. After you, sir. This way, please. They're poor travelers. There are a lot of them. They've come to see Jesus, too. Like us? I don't know why they want to see him, but I gather that the man intends to establish a new kingdom. If it's true, he'll have some opposition from those in the temple and from the Romans. But if he succeeds, there'll be something in it for all of us. Just think, a new kingdom. And I want him to meet me now, while he's still a poor man. And then, when the new kingdom is on its feet, he'll remember me. I don't want to miss out on this chance. But we're rich already. Yes, and we could get even richer. Hey, you two. Come over here. Sit here with us. What's your names? My name is Matt here. And this is Saul. And we're hungry. You're hungry? <laughs> Help yourselves then. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you two headed? Well, you know, it's his doing. He says that if we see Jesus of Nazareth tomorrow, our lives will change. <sighs> I'm not a fool. This man from Galilee will turn us from servants into masters. When his kingdom comes, we'll get rid of all the rich men, and we shall become masters of their lands, their animals, and everything they own. You're dreaming. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> The rich will become richer and stay cozy and warm while the poor are out here with their teeth chattering. That's the way it's always been, hasn't it? But the man from Galilee says that he'll establish a new kingdom. I don't know what kind, but he will establish it. Listen to me, Makir. You have no idea what sort of kingdom the man from Galilee is announcing. You couldn't even begin to imagine. But I'll tell you a story to explain this kingdom. You seem to be a man of learning, a master. I am listening. The night is long. There was once a rich man. He dressed in purple and fine linen. And he feasted sumptuously every day on fancy dishes. The guests, all as wealthy as the host, heaped praise upon him. I would like to propose a toast in honor of our magnificent host. Itamar, it is always a pleasure to eat at your table. To eat the bread made with your wheat. To eat the meat of your livestock. To eat the delicious figs from your trees. And it is a great honor to be considered your friend. Thank you, Joanne, for your kind words. And now, music for my friends. But at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus. He was full of sores and desired nothing else than to be fed with the scraps from the rich man's table.
wait a second. There's another tray full of leftovers. Outrage. One day, the poor man died and was taken away by the angels to Abraham's bosom. Some time later, the rich man also died, but he ended up in hell, in torment. been rich, looked up and saw from afar Abraham and next to him Lazarus. With a ray of hope, he shouted to them saying, Father, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus to dip his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony from these flames. Son, remember, during your lifetime you received good things and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you, a great gulf has been fixed to stop anyone who would pass from here to you, and none may cross from there to us. Wait, Father, I beg you. Master! I implore you to send Lazarus to my father's house to warn my five brothers so that they won't come to this place of torment. They already have the teachings and law of Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. But if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. And Abraham replied, if they didn't listen to Moses or the prophets, Neither will they listen to someone who rose from the dead. Those were his last words to the rich man. Lazarus had entered the kingdom of God, and that, Makir, is the kingdom you were talking about. But, Master... Good night, and God bless you. that man who told the story last night how can you be such a fool that was the man from galilee jesus of nazareth yes last night we spoke to jesus I finally found you. Being devoured by an evil fire and burning with pain. I beg you, cure me if you will. So be it. You are cleansed. that you say nothing to anyone about this. 
But go and show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded. In that way, everyone will know you are healed, and you'll be able to go back to living with other people. Rabbi, they're waiting for you. They want to see you, touch you, be cured of their ills. But are you sure he'll come? Yes, I am sure. You must be patient. All these people are here to see him. He's coming! There he is! It's him! Jesus of Nazareth! Master, have mercy on me! Master, Herod's tax collectors have taken my house and all I have. I cannot pay them, for I cannot work. Jesus, help my child. He's suffering. Master, I have come a long way from Sidon, and we cannot return there. The Romans have taken everything from us. My sons have left me. I have no help in my fields. Uh, I beg of you. I lost everything. I want to be part of your kingdom. Do you know where that kingdom is? The kingdom of God is not of this world. When it arrives, you will not be able to say, here it is or there it is. The kingdom of God is already here, inside you. Uh. We've come to hear your word. Master, my name is Amos. I want to become rich. But you're already rich, Amos. It's true but I want to become even richer. Huh? Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Huh? Blessed are those that hunger, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Huh? Blessed are you when men revile you, and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice on that day, and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so men persecuted the prophets who were before you. But I say to you also, woe to you, wealthy men, for you have already received your reward. Woe to you who are now satisfied, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who now laugh, for the time will come when you will cry and be in anguish. Woe to you. Master, why do you chase away the rich? Yours appears to be a kingdom for the poor only. My father's kingdom is the kingdom of the righteous. 
But to those who listen to me, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who despise you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who persecute you. If anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Love your enemies. Do good deeds. Give without expecting anything in return. Then you will receive your reward, and it shall be great, for you shall be sons of the Almighty, who is kind even to the ungrateful and to the evil. Therefore be merciful, as your Father in heaven is merciful. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are those who are persecuted. Blessed are the sick and those who suffer. Hundreds, thousands followed Jesus, but not all those that listened to his words accepted what he taught. Jesus asked of those who wanted to follow him something difficult. He asked them to change their lives. What does it mean to change one's life? It means to renounce loving yourself above every other thing, to renounce the comfort and weakness of sin with facts and not just words. It means to live according to the teaching of Jesus, a life of love without sin, without hate, without violence, a life lived according to the law of God. Is it possible to change one's life, to make oneself better? Is it possible to follow, alone and against the odds if necessary, the road this Jesus has indicated? Certainly it is possible. But it requires determination, strength, clearness of objective, and above all, faith in Jesus the Savior. If the world wants power and riches, if the world makes room for the violent and the arrogant, if the world rewards those who fight only to be first, if the world adores success and considers admissible any way to obtain it, if the world justifies lying, intolerance and blackmailing, if the world is disposed to accept any means of acquiring favors and money, Jesus teaches instead that all this has no room in his kingdom and that only the pure of heart will see God. Each one is free to choose after having listened to Jesus' invitation. But one must remember that no one can serve two masters at the same time, God and self. To make this choice and keep it for one's whole life is the commitment that is made in baptism in the name of Jesus, which requires daily confirmation in words and in actions. Jesus still announces with great clarity, even though it causes scandal today as it did 2,000 years ago, that blessed are the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the pure of heart, the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. The mysterious kingdom announced by Jesus, a reality beyond time without limits and confines in which millions, millions of millions of blessed contrite hearts see God, where each one of us can be if we so desire. The word of the Lord. Jesus, he is the star.